Hey everyone, I thought we could go through a full workout today. Starting off, I did a couple rounds of mobility exercises. I'll save that for another video, but right here, I'm patterning how to pick up a kettlebell. You hinge at the hips, sitting back, and then you throw the weight behind you, much like you would hike a football. And you use this technique to pick the kettlebell up safely and to put it back down to the ground without straining your back. It's really important and it's, it's a great way to fire things up and get get started but you really want to spend some time on this and get this nice and smooth before you start working with kettlebells then i went into a few rounds of goblet squats you're holding the bell up at your chest you're breathing down in your belly bracing your abs and pulling yourself down to the ground it's a great full body exercise the weight helps stretch you out so it'll help you get your squat deeper. It is totally okay to drop your hips below your knees. That is a complete nonsense myth that your hips need to be above your knees when you're squatting. It's a natural human movement pattern to get your hips down to the ground like that. Look at children. That's how you do it. After the goblet squats, I went into some bent presses. This is an old-time strongman lift that was used well over 100 years ago. The, the biggest name in bent pressing is Arthur Saxon. He was a German strongman. He set the world record back in the day, and it's been untouched since. I think he put up over 244 pounds with one arm and put up 350 pounds with the bent press in a lift called the two hands anyhow. So what I'm doing here is just kind of using the bell and slowly rotating and using the weight to open up my spine and kind of stretch out into the movement. This lift capitalizes on the leverage using your body as a support to open the elbow up and it lets you put up a significantly heavier load than you would with a normal say military press. Here I am with 106 pounds, and there's no way that I'm pressing this with a military press right now. But with a bent press, it's possible. Now, I just did a couple of these movements at the beginning of my workout. I'm using singles, just one rep per side, taking a break until everything is settled back down before I go on to the other side. This lets me build skill in the movement, crank up my nervous system, and enjoy the benefits of working with a heavier weight. So after the presses, I went into a few sets of heavy swings. I'm doing these with one arm. You can do swings with one arm or two arm. They're a little bit different, but this lets you use your full body as a dynamic power movement. I'm really emphasizing the snap at the top. It's much like a punch in karate where you're loose and relaxed and then you're tight at the end of the punch at extension. It's the same thing with the kettlebell. You're driving it with the hips, pulling it up, snapping the hips and then you're, you're contracting everything, making, making your whole body really, really tight. Just for a second, the bell kind of floats and then it drops down. As it's dropping, you get a bit of rest. So speaking of rest, I'm going into some deep breathing patterns in between sets. I'm using my diaphragm, breathing down into my belly and really working on taking advantage of the full capacity of the lungs. If you take anything away from this video at all, spend some time working on the breathing. The importance of it cannot be overstated enough. So here we go back into the swings. So even though these are one armed, I'm using my whole body. I'm tightening the free side. You see the arm swinging behind me and then swinging up. My whole body is working in unison. Now we go back into some deep breathing Breathing down into the belly, trying to get the full amount of air into the lungs, and really emphasizing the exhale. You want to get rid of the CO2. So I'm using my hands to kind of give you a visual reference for 
using the diaphragm, the belly will extend. Now I'm kind of expanding upon that and implementing some Qigong. This is some Chinese health practices. It's a holistic health system from China. It's soft style Kung Fu. So what I'm doing here is I'm breathing, I'm inhaling, lifting my arms up over my head, kind of extending back, opening my body up, and then compressing down. So the kettlebell, it's, it's contracting, it's shortening, it's tightening the muscles. And then I'm using the Qigong, the breathing exercises, to recover my heart rate and to open the body back up, which lets me do more work. It lets me recover faster and not be sore after. So these are really worth exploring. If weights aren't your thing, try the breathing out. Try breathing down into your belly. You can do this laying on your back. You can do it standing up. You can do it seated in a chair. It just takes a couple minutes. And the, the benefits are really, really tremendous. So here I am shaking my hands out. That helps get rid of the burn, the lactic acids that are building up in your muscles. The patterns of the swings, I'm doing sets of five. Then I'm taking about 40 to 50 seconds of rest, whatever I feel comfortable with before going into the next set. I want to get my heart rate down and get myself nice and fresh before I start again. This lets me train longer and train harder without accumulating negative, negative effects. It's the total opposite of the no pain, no gain mentality, going into the gym and punishing yourself. You're doing some brief, hard, intense work, and then you're dialing it back and resting until you're totally fresh. So after the swings, I went into some presses. This is a variation of the push press. This is called the Viking press. And what I'm doing here is bending my knees to accelerate the bell. And then as it drops, I'm bending my knees again to catch the bell and propel it up. So I'm doing sets of 10. And then I go back right back into the breathing to recover. Do some fast and loose, shaking my hands. I went right back into the same side. So I did about 20 total reps. And then I switched sides. This lets you get a decent amount of fatigue without going totally into the red zone before switching sides. a little bit extra on the fast and loose. I'm kind of moving my shoulders, moving my torso. My shoulders are moving in a figure eight pattern. This helps release tension, helps relax your body. And then some more deep breathing. Here we go on the left side, and the same thing. I'm launching the bell with my legs, locking it out overhead, locking my body, and then catching it by Bending my, bending my knees. So as I'm catching it, my, although I'm bending my knees, my hips are locked in place. My lower, the top portion of my legs and my hips is locked into my back, which protects your spine and keeps you safe. This isn't a, a beginner press. I would focus on mili military presses for, for a while, probably, you know, a good six months before I moved into push presses or jerks or anything of the sort. The idea with the push press is it's more efficient and it lets you do more volume, which is kind of what I was going for today. So after the swings and the presses, I did some grip work. This is called the rolling thunder. It's a two and a half inch handle. It spins it's got ball bearings in it and I'm using it with the 106 pound kettlebell 
It's fantastic for your grip strength. There's a bunch of different things you can do with it. You can do one arm deadlifts like I'm doing here. You can put it up over uh, a rack and do pull ups with it. You can put it on cable machines and do rows or arm wrestling exercises. It's got ball bearings in the handle and it spins. So it makes it harder to hold on to and it really pulls against the thumb, which is what you want to work. You've got your four fingers and then your thumb, and the thumb is usually the first to go. And you're only so strong as you know, you're able to hold on to something and pick something up. So you want to work on your grip. It's one of the number one indicators of morbidity. When your health starts to decline, you know, your grip starts to weaken. So work on your grip. You've got all those nerves in your hand going down to your fingers. So it's really, really beneficial. Just like the breathing, it can't be overstated. So what I did with the Rolling Thunder today, I did sets of five on each side to get a little bit of fatigue and then rest as I worked the other side. And then I went into singles just alternating left to right. I think I did about 70 total reps, and then I did uh, five second hangs on each hand just to kind of finish it out. It's, it's great for your forearms and your grip strength. Um, your forearms can be trained quite a bit. Your grip, you want to give it time to recover. You want to make sure it's back to where it was at before you go and hit it again. Here's a closer look at the handle. It's two and a half inches of PVC uh, and some ball bearings. And I attached it to the kettlebell with just some paracord and a carabiner. It's real simple. So to finish out my workout, I did some steel bending. This is a... I think it was four or five foot long of five sixteenths hot rolled steel and what I'm doing here is getting a bend started and then prying it open and compressing it till it snaps this is called strongman cardio so just to save you guys a little time, here's the last break in in that sequence. This is about seven minutes into into snapping the steel. This really gets the heart up. And it's it's great grip and forearm work. And there it is, that's the fifth snap. First time I tried this a couple years ago, it took me about 10, 12 minutes to get one snap. And I just did five in like seven or eight minutes. So work in time. You don't want to rush the process. Here's a look at those pieces. And yeah, yeah, I was feeling it. <laughs> And here are the kettlebells I used in my workout. The one on the left is 62 or 28 kilograms. And the one on the right is 106 pounds or 48 kilograms. And when I started working with these a few years ago, I think I got my first one in like maybe 2000, 2010 or so. I w was working with a 25 pounder. You really want to start light with these. It doesn't matter if you're an experienced athlete or if you're coming from barbell. You, you really want to take it easy and work on the, the, the movements themselves and just build up the skill and the movement and then add weight over time. It's, it's a different kind of stress because a lot of the stuff, you're, you're putting the bells in motion and it's, just, it's hitting the body differently than a lot of the other things that you're probably used to. So there you have it. This is, this is how I train. This is some of the stuff that I work on and kind of ha how I structure my workouts. If you guys are still watching this at this point, you know, I hope you enjoyed. And if you got any questions, just leave me a comment below. 
I would like to continue this and keep adding to this series. I want to I want to expand on it and help some people out. If you guys are interested in this, you know, I'd like to help you keep it going. So thanks a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.